Hi, in this tutorial I'll give you an introduction to layout and show you why we believe it is the future of 2D documentation. Since antiquity, architects have communicated their designs through art. They created beautiful artistic drawings and paintings that skillfully encapsulated their design intent. I mean, take a look at some of these drawings. You don't need to decipher them. It doesn't need a lot of explanatory notes. You can understand through perspective, colour and texture what they're trying to achieve. These drawings have soul. However, over the centuries, the skill with the pen and the paint was relegated. And with the advent of CAD, architectural drawings have been so simplified to the point where more often than not they require immense deciphering and a huge amount of explanatory notes. However, SketchUp layout has become more powerful and sophisticated. And coupled with SketchUp and PlusSpec, architects and designers will be able to bring back this art of drawing. Let me showcase a few examples of other people's work with layout. Recently we held a competition and I'll quickly show you some of the work. You can produce traditional drawings, black and white, but you can add the colour, the perspectives. You can show every facet of a design from the plans, the elevations, sections, details. All of these have been taken directly from the model so you draw at once. You can explain your intentions very quickly and easily. color, texture, you are able to create traditional uh, plan views or orthogonal views but also you're able to put in perspectives and really explain what your intent is of the room and of your design. With layout you can put in a lot of detail, you can put textures, you can put line weights and adjust them and you can essentially adjust every single thing that you put in layout, whether it be your text, your font and so forth. The choice really is yours, it brings back this artistic expression. Nick Sonder is an architect in the US and he is really pushing the boundaries of layout and this is some of his work. These are beautiful drawings. Colour, texture. Every single one of these drawings have been taken straight from a 3D model. Because of this, we always recommend that you spend at least 90% of the time in SketchUp and PlusSpec and only 5-10% to of the time in Layout. Layout should be used just to add the notations that you require to put the template on to choose your paper size. For me, this brings back the soul of artistic drawings. The way that you want to present or present your work is totally up to you. Layout gives you that freedom. And you can produce beautiful 3D details and we truly believe this is the future of detailing. Again, it's this idea of being able to illustrate it in a way that doesn't require as much deciphering. A flat 2D detail, no matter how much experience you have, requires that deciphering. These I can look at, and you can look at, and you can understand what the intent is. 
made beautiful. And again, to reiterate, these are all taken from the model. You do not have to redraw anything. So, how do you bring your model into layout? Well, you can do it two ways. One, you can open layout and then just insert the SketchUp drawing that you wanted to insert. And also note that you can create multiple different SketchUp files and insert multiple files into a single layout documentation set. So I have a SketchUp layout file, a SketchUp file that is open. And in Postback, it's important to note that we facilitated this process of easily going and transitioning into 2D by helping helping you uh, with your scene and generating your standard scene sets. Your scene sets are what you're going to use in layout for your plans, your elevations, your sections and so forth. So I've taken the time to make sure that each of my scenes are how, the, how I want them to look. So now all I need to do is go into file and then say send to layout and this will open SketchUp Pro Layout. Once it's opened it will ask you to select the template that you want to choose. You can create your own templates um, but in this exercise I'm just going to choose a blank sheet. So now you can see that I have an A3 sheet with a reference to my model. Now it's important to note that this is referencing my model. So any change I make to the model will automatically be updated in this layout file. If you go down the side, you can see that your SketchUp model is here. So that means you can change. When I left click on it and select the, the reference that I want to change, I can go into my scenes and I can say or assign it a specific scene that I've set up. So for example, if I go into a floor plan, I can then make sure that I assign it a scale. I'm working in metric, but obviously you can do it in imperial also. You can adjust the window. This is just showing what you want to show or the extent. And then quickly you can place it on the page. You can copy it and then you can paste it. So you don't need to reinsert the, uh, your SketchUp reference multiple times, you just need to do it once. And then you can place it. I can choose to change my scene, so I can show it's a different bath option. Or I can go into one of my elevations, or my roof plan for example. Just make a copy of this. And you can rotate it. And again, you can go in and assign it something else. So, for example, So you can simply and easily start to populate all of the scenes that you've generated inside of SketchUp with the help of PlusSpec. And then all you're doing is just simply placing them on the sheet. From here, you can start to add your text. And you can manipulate this in any way that you want. Go down to your text style, you can choose the style of text the typeface as well as the size. And you can start to add notation. And it's important to note that you can manipulate anything that you draw in layout. So I can go up here and say I don't like the star arrow to be like that. You can adjust the text as you like. 
can easily reference the other points. And you can use this to copy the style. So now when I draw a new one, it will always remember that. One of the great features about this tool is that if you're using real products with Plusspec, it gives you the ability to have this drop down and choose what you want to automatically display so you don't have to write it out. So I know that I'm using a Roger Seller toilet, so I can just select it and will automatically write it for me. So you can do this with every single component that you use in your drawing. For example, a wall, you would or you can rename these so that when you choose it, you can go down and choose the kind of wall that you want to attribute that information to. So stud wall, for example. We just call it prospect timber. And you can also select a face. So you can decide to show the face area, the group volume, or what it is. Or you can just re rewrite whatever you like. You can also dimension. And you can do it in any style that you like. To do that, select it will select the dimension, come down and go to your dimension style. You can choose whereabouts you want the writing to sit, whether it be above, in between or below. You can choose whether or not you want it to be inches, feet, millimeters, etc. I'm going to use millimeters. Whether it is displaying the unit or not. And you can then go back up and change the style. You can create as many pages as, as you like to select the plus sign. I'm going to show you scrapbooks. Layout comes with scrapbooks and essentially there are these it's a cool little feature where you're able to drag and drop things straight into it. So for example, you can put people to scale. Got metric as well as imperial obviously. Trees. And all of these are manipulable and editable so you can create any style that you like. They also have certain symbols that you can use. Now all of these you can use them straight out of the box or you can adjust them and create your own. Windows and door reference or symbologies for example. Notes that you like to use. You can also drag in your line weights to know which ones you want to use. And how they'll look on the page. As well as column grids, other site graphics, and there's a lot of different styles that you can choose from. But again, as I said earlier, you can create your own. So you can spend the time to do this if you like. Great little tool to place it on the page all you do is left click the symbol that you want to bring in and then left click it on the page and then you can do it multiple times. Each object references itself so you can move it easily. There's this little symbol here which is very handy and it allows you to move it around an object so that you can easily reference another. So now I know that they're lined or aligned. In layout you can also create shapes.
Now you can manipulate the line weight, for example, and the line style. If you do choose a different line style, you can also choose if you want, for example, the dashes to be close or far apart, the color, everything is adjustable. You can also put a fill Go into the fill. We'll turn the stroke off and you can make it transparent. And you can do this with any kind of shapes and lines. With the shapes, you can also assign them a pattern. And there's a lot to choose from, and obviously, again, you can create your own. When you assign a pattern, you can change the scale and the rotation. The final thing that I'm going to discuss with layout is something that's actually very important. So if I go back into my first page, layout works with layers. So you can see that I have a, an on every page and a default. If I select on every page and then for example, write something and then place it, it will now be on every single page. What you will need to do is determine how you want to set up your layers. So layers work in a very specific way. Whatever layer is on top will be the one that will be on top of the one that's below. So you can see that on every page is below the default and all of these have been put onto the default layer. Therefore, when I move it, it will be under that drawing. So if I create a new one, I normally put and then I'll assign all of these drawings to here and the way that I do that is that I've selected my new layer, right click on it and say move to current layer. Now I can create another layer and I'll call this one text and now they've all been assigned to the text layer. And you know that they've been assigned when you select, for example, one of the objects, and you will see that it will tell you with that little dot which is the layer or its active layer. So very, basically it will give you full control of what you want to show by using the layers, what their position will be on the page, uh, and their priority. Make sure that you track your layers and you stay on top of it so that if you do bring something in or you write something that you do assign it to the layer that you want it to be on. And in no time you will be able to create drawings that look like this. Simple.